Any one of you who tries to put a torch to that building will die in his tracks. Now, who wants to be first? Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Come in. Oh, uh, here it is, Mr. Paladin. Uh, whiskey, water, ice. You want something else? I want you to take this money over to the bank and deposit it for me. Oh, yes, sir. <gasps> oh, great deal of money, Mr. Paladin. $5,000. Here's a deposit slip. Yes, sir. Well? Oh, all the time I know you, Mr. Paladin, you have money. Money I earn? Yes, sir, but uh, so much money. Uh, you buy clothes, you live here, you pay for many things. You ever work and not earn money? I don't understand you. Oh, oh, hey, I work and not earn money. Most people do the same thing. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I've often worked and not been paid a dime. Oh, it, it makes me feel better. But I try not to make a habit of it. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, <laughs> well, I take this now. Oh, oh, a uh, wire for you from Nevada. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, you send answer? Yes. Yes, tell him, have gun, we'll travel. If dandruff dulls your hair, leaves your scalp itchy, please listen. You can get rid of annoying dandruff so fast today, no one should suffer any longer. With Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. Besides that, using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch Shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And while removing dandruff, Fitch can also brighten hair up to 35%. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too, use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. The trip to Nevada was for nothing. When I got there, my employer's problem had been settled. He'd been killed, and his killer had been hanged. So I turned around and started back for San Francisco, and that's how I happened to ride through Wormsville. Not really a town, just a single line of ragged buildings facing the open prairie, but trying to be a town. One of the buildings was a log cabin with a flagpole in front of it. Sitting by the side of the road, tracing figures in the dust with a willow branch, was a young boy. I stopped beside him. Hello, mister. Hello, son. You're going to be late for school. Ain't going. Oh? Why not? Not till they get rid of the school teacher. What'd she do? Nothing. Oh. You don't like her, is that it? Miss Stanton? I like her fine, but Pa says I can't go. Why does Pa say that, boy? On account of Mr. Breck says it to him. Breck? Who's Mr. Breck? He owns that big ranch over there. He don't like what Miss Stanton was teaching about Quantrill. What was Miss Stanton teaching about Quantrill? She says Quantrill's men were thieves and murderers. Mr. Breck rode with Quantrill in the war. Said he'd burn down the school and ride her out of town if she didn't stop teaching that way. So I take it Miss Stanton is still teaching that way, huh? Yep. She's stirring up a fuss. Hardly anybody's going to school now. Well, it seems to me it's Mr. Breck who's stirring up the fuss. What's your name? Morse Kaufman, sir. 
Uh, Morse, my name is Paladin. Can I sit down? Sure. Mm. How do you feel about all this? I... I don't know rightly, Mr. Paladin. Seems Miss Stanton oughtn't to teach things that'll cause trouble. Let me ask you something, Morse. Yes, sir? One and one make two. You believe that? <laughs> sure. Well, supposing I didn't like the number two. Supposing I'd just as soon forget it and use one and three and four and so on, but never two. Then what? Well, that'd be wrong, Mr. Paladin. Then maybe it's wrong to think that Miss Stanton or any teacher could do a very good job by ignoring the facts of history, no matter how much they upset some people. Maybe, but uh, Mr. Breck don't see it that way. He's too mean to think. Everybody does what he says. Except Miss Stanton. Except Miss Stanton. You wish to see me? Yes. May I speak to you alone, Miss Stanton? Miss Grubb, will you kindly come up here and sit at my desk? The rest of you go right on with your reading. After you've finished page 18 in McGuffey, then you may work on your slates. This way, young man. <laughs> well? I'll get right to the point, Miss Stanton. I don't like what you've been teaching about the Jayhawkers. The Jayhawkers? Kansas, Missouri patriots had organized a fight for the Union on the border. I hear you've been teaching that they committed a good many vicious and unprincipled acts. Is that true? Mr. Breck doesn't want me to teach about Quantrill and his atrocities. And now you, whoever you are, don't want me to teach of the Jayhawkers' atrocities, merely because they were on the Union side. Young men, I will teach the truth as it is, and not as you or Mr. Breck would like it to be. Good for you, Miss Stanton. What? I just wanted to see if you were telling both sides of the story. Who are you, mister? My name is Paladin. Here's my card. Well, I don't understand. Who hired you? No one's hired me. I still don't understand, Mr. Paladin. Miss Stanton, is anyone in this town on your side? No, I'm afraid not. I used to have 18 pupils. You saw the handful in there. Tomorrow there'll be even less. Mr. Paladin, I can't pay you for anything. Oh, no. I don't want pay. It's just to say that this is something I want to do. You don't know what you're getting into. Breck, all his gunmen. I've heard about him. There isn't anyone who'll face up to him. If this is going to be settled by guns... You have at least one on your side. Guns? Oh, oh, Mr. Paladin, there must be no fighting. Not over me. You're a teacher. And that makes you very special. Without teachers, every generation would have to start all over again. Learning from the beginning. No, Miss Stanton, you're very much worth fighting over. You're a teacher. Thank you, Mr. Paladin. I needed someone to say that. I really did. Molly Stanton gave me a list of all of her students and where they lived. She did it with little hope that it would do any good, but with the same kind of determination with which she stood up and spoke the truth in her teaching. I could do no less than make use of the list. I told you my Susan ain't going back to school until that teacher clears out. Now we've been all over it. Then we'll go over it again. Now where's your pride, Mr. Coldwell? If Breck threatened Susan's life with a gun, you'd be out there with your gun making a fight of it. But when he takes over a piece of her mind, you crawl into a hole. You get out of here. I'd be glad to leave if you'll do something about Breck. I'll do as I see fit. Now get out of my house. Mr. Caldwell, adults sometimes forget that children are learning all the time. Your Susan learns not only by what you tell her, but by the way you live. What do you suppose she's learning right now? Get out! Yes, sir? Good evening, Morse. Is your father home? Who is it? The man who was at the school today, Pa. Mr. Paladin. 
May I come in, Mr. Kaufman? I'd like to talk to you. Come on in. So, what do you want to talk about? The school. I've heard around town that tomorrow Breck's riding in to burn it down. You want help? Is that it? Yes. I'm asking the people this involves for that help. Yeah? How have you been doing? Oh, poorly. Huh? I've been riding six hours tonight, talking, arguing. Everyone's afraid of Breck. How about you? Will you help? Uh, if I said no, would you figure it's because I'm scared of Breck? Why else would you say no? Might be I figure he's right. He isn't. This fight is over Quantrill. What he was, what he'd done. Mr. Kaufman, you're wrong when you say this is a fight over Quantrill. It isn't. This is a fight over whether a man named Breck will burn down a school and drive a woman out of the county for teaching. Look, Mr. Kaufman, you hire a teacher, and you see that she has the proper training and the right moral character for the job. Then you have to let her do that job. You hold her back, you tell her what to teach and what not to teach. She ends up teaching nothing. All right, all right, but that ain't my fight. Jason and them other folks in town don't like me. The way I talk, they make fun of me. If everybody was to make a stand, I'd go along, but I don't see doing their fighting for them. But this is for yourself. You have spoken your piece, Mr. Paladin. You've had my answer. But not once have you mentioned the real reason you won't stand up to Breck. What do you mean? You're afraid of him. Wait! No one calls me a coward and walks away. Well, you just look me up at the school tomorrow if you want to finish this. Unless you'd rather shoot me in the back right now. Our cat has nine lives. She makes that clear with every impulsive leap from sofa to the top of the bookcase. All the same, she can compete with you when it comes to getting places. In no more time than it takes the cat to reach her favorite perch, you can be in Rome or Tokyo or anywhere else exciting things are happening. You do that daily on CBS Radio as network features like our World News Roundup and The World Tonight take you to the scene of the news. For all her nine lives, our cat can compete with you either where experience is concerned. Vast network facilities make CBS Radio a meeting place for interesting people, real and fictional, whose personal histories enrich your own. Why envy the cat her nine lives when CBS Radio invites you to share the life experiences of celebrities who visit you on programs like our Mitch Miller Show and invites you to share emotions with the heroes and heroines in our many fine dramatic shows? <laughs> The next morning, Molly Stanton appeared at the school 15 minutes before class was scheduled to begin. She tidied her desk, made notes for the day, then stepped out into the yard and rang the bell. But there was no one to ring it for. No students, no parents. There's our support, Mr. Paladin. Then we'll meet Breck by ourselves. Why? What for? What am I fighting about? They're not my children. Those people don't care. Why should I? Because you do care. You care for the children. Your own integrity. They just want their children here, out from underfoot. I'm sorry I'm late, Miss Stanton. Well, well, you've certainly been a stranger, Susan. Go on now, get to your desk. You have two weeks' work to catch up on. Yes, ma'am. You see, Miss Stanton, you were wrong. Somebody does care. Mr. Paladin, look. I see them. I'll wait here with you. No. No, you go on in and run your school. Well, good luck. You, Jackson Breck? That's right. You're the one who's been siding with that old hen in there. All right, boys. I got enough men to do the job that's got to be done. You can see that, stranger. I can see. But you're going to try to stop me? 
That's the idea. You're a fool. Get that gun of his. Now, hold it, Cooley. Ben's easy without his gun. Leave him alone! Uh, Let him go! Mr. Paladin, Mr. Paladin! You see all the trouble you went and caused? You! You're an animal! You should have packed your things, teacher. Now they'll just have to burn up with the school. You, kid, give me that book. No! Leave that child alone! I ain't gonna hurt the kid. I just want the book. Make a good torch. Yeah, you see? Burns pretty good. And don't do it, Breck. Oh, I'm gonna do it all right. Burns real nice, don't it? Here, Cooley, toss it inside. Ought to start the whole place off. You give me my book. Get away, kid. Leave her alone, Breck. What? It's my daughter. You leave her alone. Jason, put that rifle away. Don't nobody make a move. I'll kill the first man who does. Cooley? Move around behind him. Don't you try it, Cooley. I mean what I say. You're going to be sorry for this, Jason. Turn on your friends like you are, we'll remember, and you'll be sorry. Hold it, Frank. Hold up there. Oh, Walter Kaufman come to join the fun. That's just one more for you to worry about, Jason. What's going on here? What is that gun for, Jason? I changed my mind, Kaufman. I ain't with Breck no more. That's so? And I'll tell you, just like I told him, one false move from anybody and I fire. Jason, I got a score to settle. I told you he'd be on our side, Jason. I didn't say I was on any side. Cooley, give Paladin back his gun. What? Give it to him, Cooley. Give it to him or Jason and I'll start shooting. Thank you. Now you've got your gun back, Paladin. You can speak to Breck for all of us. All right, Breck. No one's holding me now. You've got two hands, gun in that holster. You're standing on your own two feet. What else do you want? An edge? Why, well, I, I... Or maybe this will help you fight. <coughs> oh. You only draw against women. Is that it? Or maybe school teachers you especially? Or children? All right, if not you, how about one of your men? You? How about you? Anybody? And get on your horses and get out of here. And Breck, one more thing. Don't try sneaking back some dark night. You wouldn't be very hard to find afterwards. That's right, Breck. Big man like you, you wouldn't be hard to find at all. Hey, eh, Jason? No, there'd be nothing to it. Let's get out of here. Well, it's finished. Not quite. Paladin, last night you called me a coward. Yes, I did. Why? I wanted you mad enough so you'd think about what I said. Uh, it made me think. That is for sure. I never thought you were a coward, Mr. Kaufman. I knew you were afraid. I knew what you were afraid of. That you'd fight for Jason here and his friends. and Afterwards, they'd just laugh at you for being a fool. And uh, I might have, too, Walter. I was proud about all the wrong things. Like you having an accent and me not. Then when I saw Breck going after Susan, well, maybe that's what helped me get things straight. I'm glad. Well, now, isn't it time to get the children back to school? Oh, Mr. Paladin, you're back so soon? Welcome, welcome. Oh, you give me back. How you been, hey boy? Anything happened while I was gone? Oh, yes, uh, many things happened. 
Triple up in harbour, streetcar break chain and run down hill, man chase wife through a street with butcher knife, many thing happen for you, sir. <laughs> well, I suppose I mean, did anything good happen? Oh, you let me think, Mr. Paladin. Ah, uh, no. I beg your pardon. What? My name is Francis. Has anyone paged my name in the lobby in the last few minutes? Not since we've been here, Mrs. Francis. It's Miss. Oh, I beg your pardon, Miss Francis. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Paladin. How do you do? You're staying here at the hotel? Why, yes. I registered yesterday. And, uh, are you staying long? That depends. I might stay indefinitely if I find San Francisco interesting. I'm certain that you will find it that way. Really, Mr. Paladin? With my help, of course. How nice. Shall we say eight o'clock? How very nice. Yes. Until then. Until eight o'clock. I'll be looking forward to it. Hey, boy. Yes, sir. You lied. Uh, I lie? Oh, no, Mr. Paladin, I don't lie. Something very good did happen while I was away. Here comes Elmer Blurt, world's lowest pressure salesman. Nobody home, I hope, I hope. Oh, gosh, it says salesman keep out. Hey, come back here. Uh, 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 you wouldn't want to buy a new Rambler American station wagon, would you, mister? You poor fella. Let me show you how to sell. You got to use high pressure. Yeah, but... You got to tell the customer you must buy America's lowest price station wagon, the Rambler American. The small wagon with automatic transmission, the reclining seat, deep coil springs, and handsome American styling. Is that a fact? Then you say the Rambler American is America's easiest parking station wagon and can save hundreds of dollars a year on gas and maintenance. Uh, but will that high pressure work? I'll prove it works. Order me a Rambler American station wagon. Now, how do you like my sales technique? Well, uh, it's not as good as your neighbor's. Oh? No, he just sold himself a Rambler station wagon and a Rambler sedan. Want a whale of a buy on a used car? See your Rambler dealer right now for a tremendous assortment of select used cars taken in trade on all the new Ramblers. See your Rambler dealer for a select used car. Have gun, will travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe. He is produced and directed by Norman McDonnell and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Sam Rolfe and adapted for radio by John Dawson. Featured in the cast were Helen Cleave, Harry Bartell, Richard Perkins, Virginia Gregg, and Joel Davis. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week for Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs> <laughs>